Hello. This video will be about the Marks Prehistoric Mountain Playset number 3414 from 1975. This is the box, rather large. Get uh, a look at the different sides here. There's that little illustration they started using after Marx was sold to Quaker Oats. At this point, Quaker Oats owned Marx. I think it was, a, I'm not really sure, around 1972 that Lewis Marx sold the company to Quaker Oats and he retired. And they held on to it until 77, and they sold it to a British company named Dunby Convex. And it didn't last real long after that. I think in 79, it was uh, liquidated. And the molds ended up in different places. But anyway, this box is pretty spectacular, as we can see here. And the bottom of it even has some stuff to look at. Division of Quaker Oats Company there. So, there's the box. And uh, those boxes, when, when they turn up, you know, on eBay with the box, the boxes are usually ragged i mean the, given the size of those things and uh you know they took so much abuse over the years and but they were sturdy to start with i mean they're thick uh they're they're corrugated cardboard and and marks always you know had good sturdy boxes but uh still you don't find many these days in nice shape even though this one is a little ragged on the edges it's it's a lot it's in a lot better shape than most of them you'll actually see. Okay, now we will look at the components. I have constructed the five-piece mountain set or setup from the set. Uh, there's the big mountain, the smaller one, the uh, rock bridge. By the way, that stands at 20, right under 20 inches at the apex. And there's the uh, wooden footbridge. That just sits on there. It's got a little uh, round tab that sticks out there that fits into the hole. And it goes between the mountains for the cavemen, something for them to walk on. There's the uh, river section. Now, those are all thick plastic. They're in... in uh, in yellow plastic with uh, brown uh, highlights uh, spray painted on there. It's got a really nice play mat, and this fits into the designs on the play mat. There are caves inside there, and I'll show those to you in a minute. Right now, let's look at the dinosaurs. Uh, here we have uh, the revised mold group. Uh, Brontosaurus, and uh, this uh, it's divided up into two different colors, uh, uh, half of them in brown and half of them in uh, light gray. There's a sleek T-Rex. Now this revised mold group, uh, it came about in like around 58, I think. But since uh, this is a set from the 70s, it's using, uh, there's a stegosaurus, it's using the plastic that they changed to around 64, which does not have the lead paint 
in it for the color pigment as a dimetrodon. And uh, it ended up being that the, the dinosaurs are not as individualized as they were in the old plastic. And in general, I think most collectors appreciate the old plastic more than this new stuff because they all look the same in the new plastic. Also, they don't have that strong distinctive odor that a lot of collectors enjoy uh, from the lead-based paint in the plastic. There's an Allosaurus. That was a Trachodon. There's an Ankylosaurus. And here is the uh, Triceratops. has the thinner horns since it's from the revised mold group. And here's the second series mold group. This has the prehistoric mammals in it. Uh, it's in two colors also, the mint green and the light gray almost white really but kind of the light gray anyway this is in the mint green swilly mammoth it's one of the favorite marks pieces and also in the new plastic they didn't have those premium pieces uh in the older sets uh before uh you know like in the early 60s and on back here's the iguanodon with the thumbs up uh they had the premium pieces one per set either metallic silver, which was the most common, or else metallic green or a weird color of brown on uh, on one of the uh, pieces from the large mold group. But they don't have that in these this newer these newer sets from the 70s. And there's the Styracosaurus. Here's the Megatherium or giant ground sloth. Now that's a solid figure there. Pretty heavy, really. And you know, the sculpting is good on these and everything, but they don't really show the detail that the old plastic showed. Everything's kind of glossed over and uniform with this, this new uh, plastic mix. Some collectors call it the, the heritage plastic because I think it was popular in uh, a line of place that's by Mark's uh, called heritage and you know it's kind of waxy and like I said there's just it's all the same there's total uniformity which uh, is not as cool as the old ones that had the marbling and the different uh, looks to different pieces and all that okay uh, this is the medium mold group there are six of these this is in the, the uh, mint green. Here's the Trachodon. And the Hadrosaurus waving. He's kind of a collector favorite because he's has some personality, I guess. Allosaurus. Ankylosaurus. And there are slight differences between like the Allosaurus from the medium mold group and the Allosaurus from the uh, revised mold group. The pattern on the stomach is a little bit different. It's it's harder to see in in this newer plastic because like I said, it doesn't show up show the detail as nicely. Here's the Stegosaurus from the medium mold group. By the way, the numerical uh, the, the the numerical designations for these per marks are uh, the uh, revised. There's a Pteranodon. The uh, revised mold group. There are eight of them, and uh, that numerical designation is uh, PL nine seven seven. Here's the second series mold group. That uh, numerical designation for that mold is, is the uh, PL1083. The medium mold group is PL750. And here's the small mold group, the PL755. And I'll show these real quick. 
Triceratops. This is a small mold group. It's all in the light gray. And in general, it's just these three colors. I mean, the, the newer plastic, like from the, the 70s sets, just had three colors. You know, they had the mint green, the, the light gray, almost a, a white, uh, and that uh, brown. That's pretty much it. Whereas in the uh, in the older sets with uh, the older uh, the older plastic with the the lead based paint in it, you know, not only did it have that distinctive smell, but it had uh, such variety in color. You, know, you had marble pieces, you had premium pieces in weird colors, uh, you know, and the the detail was a lot better on the older figures too. But, you know, the people that grew up in the 70s and had these to play with, I maybe they liked them better. I don't know. There's the Sinagnathus. Sinag, Sinag and these are Platyosaurus, by the way. So, uh, you have a total of 29 dinosaurs in this set. You have uh, the one shot of the revised mold group with uh, eight in it. You have the one shot of the second series mold group with eight animals. You have the uh, one shot of the medium mold group with six. You have one shot of the small mold group with seven. So basically, you know, eight, eight, 16, 22, and seven is 29. So a full set would contain these 29. And then we have 18 cavemen in this set. Uh, there are three sets of six. Uh, this marks designation for this mold group is PL746, I believe. And you know, these guys are sculpted really well and they still look good in this plastic, but they look better in the older plastic. A lot more detail. There's the guy with the rock over his head. Here's the guy walking. See if I can get that. Yeah, there we go. I want to focus on all that stuff in the back. And uh, you know, the guy walking with the club, and here's the guy with like the the stone axe and the knife. And here's the short caveman with the spear. And you got this guy crouching here with the rocks. Looks like he's starting a fire. Trying to. And you got uh, the other crouching caveman. Looks like he's skinning a rabbit. Basically, those are the six marks caveman poses. And you had uh, three uh, full sets of these guys in this uh, prehistoric mountain set. So you had 18 total. And then you have uh, a full, well, now from a lot of sources, they say that this place set only contained two uh, palm trees and two ferns. In this one, I've got the, uh, the whole uh, set of four. So it's got the regular set of the, the four trunks and palm fronds. There are seven of them because three of these are double trunks. Then you got the fern bases, four of them, and then you got two of the three leaf ferns and two of the four leaf ferns. So I'm sure that it varied, you know, from set to set. A lot of times uh, they didn't go by standard rules for, for factory uh, components with these things. Uh, and sometimes you might find extra of this and a little bit too little of that. They, I think they were more interested at Marks really in having the same number of total pieces that are guaranteed on the box even though they usually went with uh, the standard assortment, but it could have varied. And I'm sure a few of these were released with uh, the four palm trees and four ferns, even though a lot of them might have just had the two. You know, uh, I'm sure there was a lot of variance there. What I'm going to do right now is set this thing up so you can see it. Uh, yeah, it's so tall, it's hard to get it all in here, but 
you know, I kind of set them up around there. And uh, a lot of cavemen in that cell. Like I said, there's 18. And the, there are caves all in through those mountains, uh, those two big mountain sections there, and plus the rock bridge on the top there. Some cavemen are ganging up trying to deal with that smilodon coming across the rock bridge, and you got a footbridge there. And they're going to drop some rocks down there on some uh, unsuspecting uh, dinos moving through the river. And you got the brontosaurus and the T-Rex there in the center. Couple of triceratops, they always pick on the T-Rexes, you know. So, uh, anyway, there you go. That's, that's the setup for the uh, Mark's Prehistoric Mountain. And I'm going to take the camera loose and move it around. And we'll get a Pteranodon's eye view of, uh, of the set. And see those caves all in through there. And I mean, talk about hours and hours of play value. And these things are rugged too. You have to use the metal nuts and bolts uh, to to fix uh, these two mountains together. And they they are not going to get knocked over or fall apart once you get them fixed up. They're going to hold together. Mark's really made. Uh, their products very tough, and uh, it can last through uh, any amount of uh, regular play. Of course, you know if the kid was destructive, it could certainly uh, cause some problems. But uh, you know, it's even with uh, with play that was a little rough, these things could stand up to it. Uh, get the different angles here. Show the inside. Uh, there's a little campfire there. A couple of guys are gathered around inside the cave. And Megatherium back there. And Woolly Mammoth. They're wondering what they're doing millions of years ago. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, in the timeline, Mark's... Uh, they acknowledged that these things lived at different times, but they included everything so kids could play with them all at once because that's really what we wanted to do as kids. We wanted to reenact dinosaur movies, you know, have cavemen battle dinosaurs and prehistoric mammals and stuff. Like one million years BC. Sadly, there's no Raquel Welch figure, but I suppose... Someone that's very enterprising could come up with one, especially with 3D printing these days. And there is a 1 million uh, years BC, actually it's just called 1 million BC, that came out one year before this set in 1974. And it's actually this exact set, it's just in a different box. And uh, I don't think it had a play mat with it. I don't have that set, so I don't know for sure. Here's the original instruction sheet that came with it. And it tells you how to set up the uh, the mountain there. And it's, it's really kind of an involved thing, you know. I mean, a smart kid could do it, but a young kid would probably have to get the parent to do it. I keep mentioning kids because these, these, even though this channel is not for kids, these uh, toys were made for kids, and we played with them when we were kids. Now we're monster kids and dino kids, which, you know, we're adults, and we still like the things that we enjoyed as children, and, uh, you know, we collect this stuff. Uh, here is the booklet. It's a lot different from the previous book. Let's, this one's in color. And it's got some text there explaining, you know, describes uh, each animal and even tells 
phonetically how to say the name. Yeah, as kids, we, we knew those dinosaur names. We might not know something we're supposed to in school, but we knew about toy dinosaurs. And there is uh, the timeline. And see, it, it gives uh, that the mammals and man came much later. Doesn't give, you know, really detailed about it, but it, it does, you know, give that much scientific information. But as kids, we just wanted to play with this stuff, man. We want to set it up. We wanted to act out our little stories that we made up, you know, and have fun with it. And now that we're old and, you know, adult, we uh, collect the stuff. Sadly, I can't play anymore. I have to have game rules or something like that. I can't suspend disbelief to the point. Now, here is uh, ads in here on the back of this for some of the other Mark's vertical play sets. Uh, the ad was, uh, the, the ad blurb was, uh, uh, in the 1970s, Mark's went vertical with play sets. Here's the Comanche Pass. That's the Western set. Now, the Comanche Pass uses the same uh, mountain formations as this set, but instead of a river, it's just left uh, as yellow or whatever, and it's supposed to be like a, a pass in the desert or whatever, you know, and it's got cowboys and Indians. And there's the Navarone playset. That's a different type of mountain, but it's, it's one of Mark's vertical playsets. And these are fondly remembered by kids who had them in the 70s. And here's something you don't see every day. This is an original card that was sold with this set. And uh, you could fill this out and send it back to Mark's. And uh, basically, uh, they're gathering information. And uh, you just you rate the play set. Let me see if this thing will focus. Boy, I'll tell you what. It's... Hang on a minute. Well, anyway, you know, it's a consumer card that was included in there, and I'm sure most of, most of them got thrown away, but a few people might have filled them out and sent them in. I don't know. And it's got the number of the playset up here so that when Mark's got the few that they got back, they knew what was sold and what it was included in to start with. So that's pretty much it. A finally remembered playset, uh, Mark's prehistoric mountain playset from 1975, number 3414. And I've given you the, that's complete. So if you wanted to complete one of these, you know what dinosaurs to get. And, you know, these, these newer dinos are easier to find in the marketplace than uh, the old ones. So you shouldn't have any trouble to complete the dinos. Now, some of these pieces like the mountain formation itself, to find uh, all five pieces that are undamaged is a little tough, and they're expensive. The play set's a little tough. Usually those have big holes in them, and you know they're in pretty rotten shape. Uh, and the instruction booklet, that color instruction booklet, I'm pretty sure it goes for a premium these days, especially in nice condition. Not sure how much, you know, the more common older booklets seem to sell for 10 or 20 bucks, maybe a little more in nice condition. These here, these color ones, may may actually uh, sell for two or three times that. I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't shopped for this in a long time. I completed my sets and hung it up, you know. I just need one of each. I don't need to get duplicates and take up more room. I'm happy with just uh, one of each type of play set. And one of these days, I like to get a 1 million BC play set, uh, even though it's the same formation and all that, just to have the different box, you know. And, but probably never will actually get one at this point, but who knows, might come across one on a decent deal. One good thing, even though a lot of this stuff is a little scarce these days, uh, they... Uh, 
that there aren't a lot of people looking for it. So there's not a lot of competition. And it doesn't sell for as much as what you'd think that some of this stuff would sell for. Uh, like now a complete mountain set like this, currently on eBay, well, in, in the first place, I never see them complete. Getting a complete one like this with the box in decent condition might be a six or seven hundred dollar piece now and it may be more i don't know but uh, you can get you know pieces and put your own set together that's the way you almost always have to do with these play sets you uh you you get all the components buy them separately and you end up with buying a lots on ebay and you end up with a lot of duplication that you can eventually sell and trade away later on but um that's really how you have to build these play sets most of the time nowadays. You you seldom ever find one complete. Uh, but now, you know, one reason I'm doing these videos is so people know what comprises a complete set so that they can build their own and put it together with original pieces and, and get one that way. If you could ever find one still sealed in the box that's never been busted out, uh, they've got the big staples in the top, so you, you know if it's been busted out because it tears the box flap when they, they open them. And almost all of these have been opened. I, I don't know of a sealed example of this. I've never seen one before. But if, if one of those ever came up with a really nice box that had never been opened, I mean, who knows what it would sell for. Maybe, I know it would go for over $1,000, maybe two grand. I don't know. It's just whatever. It's, it's hard to tell. When you're going to sell something like that, you, the way I would do it, I, I wouldn't leave it up to an auction because your buyer for it may not come around for a while, you know. I just put a, I buy it now with best offer on it and wait. Just be patient. You know, if, you, if you're in a hurry to sell something like that, you're not going to get nearly what you would out of it if you were just patient. But anyway, I've droned on long enough there's the Mark's Prehistoric Mountain, and that is all for now. Thanks for watching.